seven times. Yeah. Here we go. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? I hope everybody is doing well. Um, so uh, I am going to go back and say hello to everybody before we get um, started. But I just wanted to uh, welcome Jess from s &J Creations and the owner of the Draglins and Books Facebook page. And of course, our wonderful um, artist, Randall Spangler, who we are just so in love with. We love his artwork and Amazing. so like happy to have him here. Um, but I'm going to say hello to everybody that's in the chat first. And then I do have a few uh, little shout outs and, and, then, and then an embarrassing picture to show. But I'm going to show it anyway. Because um, I, I, di I did draw. I couldn't draw along while the live was happening. So I did have to go back and, and watch afterwards. I had to hashtag replay it. Um, so, you know, but I, I, I did draw something. Um, and I'll show you that, but, um, let me go and say hello to everybody. Um, so hello, Nancy and Diana and Lee. Oh, you're jumping from one live to another. Hey, dipping time. And Catherine, Robin, Brenda, Marion, Joanne. Hey, Vanessa. Hello, Miss Sue. Hey, Joe. Let's see. Hey, Kylie. Marion, how did you do? one of your drawing my husband said oh, ha, ha, you'll see mine mary and you'll see it hey tanya hey jen hey sherry doing great working oh doing your chuck along and spangler hey good job um hey jamie hey tammy hey sparkling diamonds peggy tyra i hope i said that right um hey kaden hey liz carolyn jen m um, Cynthia, hey, girly girl, hey, Aaron, hey, GGs. okay. Oh, Caden says, Randall, I have almost all of your seasonal houses. I only need the oh. two left. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> He's waiting on the others. Hello, yeah. Paula. Okay, so I want to give this shout out real quick. Oh, thank you. Yay, I said it right. Okay, I was looking through. First off, I just got to say, I am very, very impressed with all you guys that um that did the drawing you know and you know you put yourself out there you really did and i mean i'm telling you i saw some amazing little dragons and it just made my little heart sore um but i do have a few shout outs that i just gotta say i was super super happy with the first one i gotta say um and i'm sure she's probably not on here hey nicole um but debbie five-year-old um daughter did a drawing of a dragon and it was just absolutely precious and just made my little heart sore that we had a little five-year-old that was you know engaged and wanting to draw and i just love them berta i did love yours yours was so cute and you already colored yours in though girl <laughs> hey diamond painting die hard um, the second one, I've got to give a huge shout out to this person because she, Randall, not only did she draw, not only is she working on a diamond painting, but she's also working on a cross stitch. Oh my gosh. She, she, <laughs> three things. So that was Paula Van Bazuchin. I know I butchered that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, Sherilyn. But I was just like, wow, wow, wow. First off, she did an amazing, she she like took all of your pictures with all the different um, angles for the face and all mm -hmm. the, she, she drew, she drew them all and put like little notations. It was amazing. Wow. And yeah. I, I was impressed. I was like, what? Look at that. She like, she, she took, Everything that you did, and she's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. Um, and then my last one that I want to give a shout out to is Theta Seeger Hanel. I know I butchered that one. What is ooh, ooh, these names? Um, but Theta, she did, if y'all have not gone and looked, y'all need to go and look. She did this absolutely adorable adorable little dragon like peeking over a little mushroom and oh my gosh it was it was precious i cannot wait 
to see it colored. And the funny thing is, is she did it on lined paper and she's like, I don't know why I started doing it on lined paper, but I just did and I just kept going with it. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Okay. Now, listen, nobody laugh, please. I'm not an artist, but I did my little, I, I tried. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe I won't do this. Okay. So it's cute. this oh, is my cute. little yeah. girl. I don't know what her name is going to be yet. I'll let y'all name her. Um, I'm, I'm going to continue trying to work on her, but I tried to, I tried to, I gave her little eyelashes. See, look at her little, yeah. her little eyelashes yeah. right there. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what kind of wings I gave her. I was going for butterfly wings. I don't know what the heck those things are, mm -hmm. but butterfly wings yeah do butterfly you, but, wings look like that sometimes well, <laughs> you just you know it depends on the detail you put into it uh you know the design you put on the wing if it's similar to what a butterfly has yes so yeah. i could still do something to make it look like that like butterfly wings oh sure oh yeah, yeah. Oh, i have hope then i have yeah. hope then I like the way you made it that's just what i kind of was talking about take the basics of what i showed you and make it your own dragon. Like you gave it wings instead of front leg, <laughs> and you had it standing up instead of squatting, and you know, and it kind of gave it a different face. And it's your well, dragon. I, what I was kind of hoping is like I was hoping that she's like maybe flying to land on something, like mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like she's trying to land. So that was kind of why I went with that. But I'm like, Lord, what have I got myself into? <laughs> And art is just imagination wrapped yeah. into one. Exactly. So I was just like, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on try. So that's what I did. All right. So what I'm gonna do is um and those that have come in and I have missed y'all, um I just want to say thank y'all for being here. And I I I hope that everybody has had fun. And before we get to the drawing, um portion so Rayla, you know how we have four fifty dollar gift cards yes so we're giving one out a week yes. so i have all the entries for week one so i'm going to tell you what numbers and you go pick me a number and then we go that is the person because uh each each entry that you did so like if you did if you started a diamond painting that was an entry if you did a drawing that was another and for the person that, that did all three, <laughs> she got another entry for doing a cross stitch. So, uh, oh, Stephanie, how do you enter? You go to Draglins and Books web, uh, Facebook website, Facebook page on the internet. <laughs> go to Draglins and Books Facebook page, and you don't have to you don't have to sign up or anything. There's a post there um, for week two now because week one is closed out, but. Uh, you you put whatever uh, Spangler painting that you're working on, or if you're drawing along with us, or both, um, you know, and you put that in there, and you get an entry. So that's how you you enter. Um, okay, so we had a total of 55 entries for this week one. Wow. Although I will tell you, I saw a whole lot of people are working on nap time. <laughs> a whole okay. lot of. Oh. <laughs> It's um, Draglins and Books. Draglins and Books. Um, Cynthia, you're pretty good at putting the links. Can you please, for the door, will you put the um, the link for the Draglins and Books Facebook page? Would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, okay, so. We have 55, so I need a number from 1 to 55. Okay. How about 23? All right, 23. Okay, so Jenny, the 23 is Jenny Smith Wallace. So, Jenny, I have no idea if you're here in the live. Um uh, if you're not, I will try to 
contact you through Facebook, but I do need your email that you use with DAC, with Diamond Art Club, so that I can give them that and they will send you your gift card. Thank you so much, Cynthia, for putting that up there. Appreciate it. Okay, so congratulations to Jenny Smith Wallace. I am so happy. And so that is our very first. I need to go ahead and highlight her so I don't lose it. She is doing Reading Tree, which I did um, in July. In July. Yeah, yep, I did that in July. It's sitting behind me over there. And I guess this is the last show and tell that I'll do. This is what I have done so far on gathering of dragon and dragons. Oh, you're, you're getting more, a lot more done. I it am. So sparkly. I'm good. I just love them. I love them. It's been so much fun because they're always fun. And, and I got to start on the purple and blue. And those are some of my favorite colors. So. <laughs> Okay, so let me highlight this before I forget and say, whoop. all right, so I am going to switch the um, layouts. Let me do this. Okay, and then drag here. here. Now, I'm going to do what I did last time with is I'm going to put Spangler. Jess and I are still going to be here. Don't don't freak out because you don't see our faces. Jess and I are still here. But I'm doing it big so that y'all can actually see. Hey, Mindy. Hey, Sandy. Um, so that you can see what he's doing even better. Okay. So, oh, no, that was that was not the wrong so button. I'm, I'm going to switch my camera around in just, just a moment here. And uh, I drew out a couple, a few dragons that I'm going to start coloring on. Uh, but I wanted to remind you of the coloring book on Amazon, uh, the Draglings coloring book. A uh, great place to practice your coloring. There's every page is a Dragling. You know, you can practice with colored pencils, maybe a very light, uh, a very kind of a dry wash with some with some watercolors, a possibility. Um, so anyway, Draglings coloring book. And uh, I'm going to twist my camera around here and try to flip my mode to face down. Camera. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. There we go. Something I couldn't figure out how to do last week. Hey, so look at you. You are coming right along. You are coming right along. I told you. <laughs> so anyway, is that uh, is that bright enough? I can see it pretty good. What about you, Jess? Uh huh. It's yep. Okay. If I turn the brightness all the way up on my phone, it, it looks even better. <laughs> okay. So uh, last week, um, you know, we did. I drew out a dragon, kind of showed you some basics on this dragon, a sideways view, which is kind of a, the simplest view of doing the big circle for the body here, a little bit smaller circle for the shape of the leg. Uh, and then you add the tail to that. And then it's almost like a light bulb here, right? There's the light bulb shape. And then add his head again, which is kind of a circle and a little squared area there, and a little, I like round noses. They don't have to have round noses. Uh, and then the arms, like an oval there, and an oval there, a little round circle for a hand, and then put some fingers on it, and you, you kind of have it. Uh, then you just kind of smooth out the edges and blend it together. So I give them a little bit of an elbow there. Um, anyway, and here we've got the toes. So this is what I'm going to I'm going to work on today, um, and I'm going to use both watercolor, and I use a transparent watercolor, and then I'm going to do another one down here uh, with colored pencil, and then I draw out a totally different dragon here. Uh, I was kind of showing how you can just change the ears, change the eyes, change the shape of the nose with the same basic shape of the dragon, on, like here. And uh, 
the fun thing about doing a dragon like this is he can be as many crazy colors as you want to make him. So he's going to be kind of fun to work on. I'll work on him a little bit later on here. So I am going to start. And the paper I'm working on here, this is a sketch pad, mostly for drawing. Uh, it, it takes a very light wash of watercolor. So I'm going to use my, my watercolor paints uh, fairly dry because uh, if you put too much water on the paper, all it's going to do is just kind of buckle up and uh, um, wrinkle. So this will be an experiment. This is not quite what I normally work on. And I'm over here, what I'm doing right now, unfortunately, my camera doesn't sh show two things at once. I'm just taking a couple shades of green and a little bit of like uh, uh, yellow ochre and mixing it with the green. I like kind of a warm yellowy green for my dragons. Oh. So now, do anyway. You use, do you use pan watercolor or um, do you use a uh, tube? The tube? Well, I always use the tubes and I put it out in this little tray with all these little sections. <coughs> uh, I kind of give you an idea what I'm using here, this type of a thing. And then I let them dry and then I go back to them. And that's what I use for a long period. Uh, but whatever you have works. Um, so, so what I'm going to, I like to start with, I always like to start with things very light, uh, kind of lighter shades of green and then build them up to the darker areas and to keep, um, the general shape just got a text in on my phone and text popped up over my drawing here. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I, I like to start around the edges like this. And some of the areas that will probably be shaded darker as uh, by the time I get it finished, because the highlights will be kind of along the top edges. And, uh, and you can see I'm, I'm not really, the water's not just flowing all over. It might be similar to what a marker would look like, uh, where you just kind of put on a layer of color and, and uh, just keep layering it up and blending it. And I like to keep blending it while the water's still a bit wet. Now you notice I'm getting a little lighter and a little lighter as I get near the top because that's going to be the lightest part of, uh, of the tail to make it kind of look round. It still needs to be green, but very, very light green. Uh, the other thing I'm not used to is working on white paper. So to leave a light highlight, I need to just not put much paint in those areas. I usually work on a, a darker paper so I can make everything. I paint it basically the same idea. But when, before I'm totally finished, I'm able to go in with maybe even some white paint or a very light colored pencil and touch those highlights up. So I'm just going to work all over this guy. And uh, I, I like to do it in sections too, like this. That way, once it dries, the arm will look like it's kind of its own, its own uh, unit rather than just blended with uh, the other parts right next to it. You kind of get that little bit of darker shading right around the edges here. Just like that. See, it starts to get a little bit of a shape there already. And then do a little more watercolor on, the, on this part to kind of blend it in. And the nice thing about watercolor is even if an area is kind of dry, you could with a, still go back in and just go over it a few times and it still picks up that paint that was down there and blends it in. So I'm kind of keeping my colors very light here. Sure. Hey, Kara, bestie. Kara's in the house. <laughs> and if anyone has any questions about what I'm doing, make sure you send a message to Brandy so she can ask me the question and I can try to answer. Yep. If you've got a question, just put it in the chat and Jess and I will... 
um, we'll ask that question. Yes. Oh, no, Tammy, you can submit a new drawing for week two. That's perfectly fine. I loved your little dragon. You did really good. Yeah, I would say just experiment. Just play with it and experiment. You know, if the one you're you're not happy with the one you're working on, then set it aside and work on another one. Uh, that's how you learn, and that's how I do things too. I I do start drawings and uh, and pieces that I'm not real happy with. I've got a few pieces around here that are unfinished, um, just because I wasn't really happy with the direction they're going in. But oh. if I look at them long enough, eventually I kind of figure it out and maybe I'll go back to them and finish them. So let's see, what have I got here? Um, somebody asked, have you created anything new lately? Like total new pictures? Uh, no, nothing, nothing new exactly. I've been working on some uh, more border designs. Uh, I'm working on another another little book uh mm. it's a counting book so i've kind of been playing around with border designs for that oh that is awesome so anyway so here i am trying to uh, now i can feel that my paper is wrinkling a little bit but that's you know as it dries out it'll flatten out again but if i put any more water why it'll be it'll be a bit of a problem. So what I'm probably going to do is let areas like here where I've got a lot of water and a lot of color, I need to let that dry a little more before I put another layer on top of it, I think. Otherwise, I'm going to get it too wet. And if it's a, uh, a paper, kind of like what I'm doing here, a bit of a drawing, maybe more drawing than watercolor paper, if I put a little too much water on it and rub on it too much, uh, the surface of the paper will start kind of tearing. So you just need to take it very slow. It's like one of those where it'll start going through the paper. It might. Yes, it might. And then the surface of the paper kind of gets ragged and such. So anyway, so okay. there we go. Now we've got a base, a nice base green color there. And you can see it varies a little bit from a little more yellow green there to a little darker green other places. But that's kind of the fun of of doing a drag and it just just make it whatever <laughs> mix your colors they're saying you're lagging a little bit randall um my the uh talking you mean no the talking's fine i think it's the um it's kind of like the same issue we had um oh so as long as you're not going super fast, we can see what's happening. Okay. Okay. I will try to move slower here with it. Um, I guess next week I'm going to have to find a new location uh, in the house. Closer to the Wi-Fi, possibly. Uh, you know, last year I was back here. In, this is my, my studio and work area, and everything seemed to go smoothly. But... Um, I did have a lightning strike in January and right next to the house. Uh, and even though I had a surge protector, it did blow out uh, a couple TVs and a receiver and it affected LED lights and uh, had, a, had to have new, um, new router and such put in the house. So I do have different equipment than I had last year. So that may be making a difference. It could, although Sue says you're fine for her. Okay, okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Peggy asks, have you been able to draw since you were a child? Uh, well, I don't know if I could draw, but I always wanted to draw. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. <laughs> you know, when you're a little kid, you know, it wasn't like I was a, could draw very well. Uh, when I was young, but I, it's just what I love doing. So I just draw and draw and draw and I still do. And, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's like anything, the more you practice, the better you get. So anyway, so as you can see, I just keep adding a little more and a little more and a little more color. 
just trying to trying to get it darker and darker. It's it won't ever look quite like the dragons I do in my normal artwork because I do it on um, a tan colored paper, which makes it all darker to begin with. Right. But it, see, I just like building up uh, the colors, and you can just build and build. So can you add watercolor to already dried watercolor, or will that mess it up? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. No, that'll be fine. Uh, you can do about the same where it's not too wet. And uh, you just put more layers on top. You may get a few areas where they're kind of edges. As you can see, maybe right in there, there's a little bit darker streak. There's a little edge where something, you know, one color, but, but uh, was on top of another. But if you have just a little bit of water and a little bit of color on your brush, you can go in and kind of smooth those areas out. Oh, okay. kind of blend it, but but you just have to take it very easy and and if you're working on a watercolor paper, uh, you may it may be working much better than this paper, particular paper I'm working on here. So I think what I'm going to do while the green is drying a bit, I'm going to switch to the kind of golden brown color. It's a yellow ochre, is what I like to use on the stomach and. Uh, on his chin and his feet and his hands and his ears. So here we go, a little bit of a browner color here. Again, I'm, I'm working very, very light just to get a nice base color in there. And uh, normally uh, on my brown paper, I will do colored pencil on top of my watercolor all the time. Uh, and if this gets dry uh, enough, I might try that here, but I'm not sure if it will dry enough during this time period, but I can show you that next week. Um, but down at the next piece, I'm going to do a total colored pencil for coloring. Oh to kind of give you a feel for for how that's done or how i do it i should say there are probably other ways and i'm sure other artists might might show you different ways to do these kind of things uh, but you know that's kind of the thing with art you you figure out you know what you like working with are you do you enjoy watercolor do you enjoy the colored pencils or markers and you just use what works for you Just kind of get like basically what you're the most comfortable with. Exactly, exactly. Kind of it, it makes the picture look like what you want it to look like. Now, did you try like when you were experimenting? Did you try like all different types of mediums and stuff to yes. just whichever made you happiest? Uh, yes. Well, that's kind of what school is about. Uh, you know, high school, I, I went to a couple years here at the Kansas City Art Institute, and uh, that's generally what they do is just you, you work in all variety of medias, you do sculptures, you do just a whole variety of things, just, just to gain experience and a feeling for what everything can do and uh, then what you like best. It's coming together so nice. I know. Look at. I'm sorry. I'm just entranced. <laughs> and see this. This is the back foot here. Here's the front foot, and here's the one behind him. Again, here's his arm back here. So that's going to be a little darker than the one in front of it. It's kind of the darker you make it, it sets it back a little more. And so uh -huh. ear up here, and put a little shading inside the ear, and a little bit of shading on that little hump. But. Uh, so you want the lighter color closer to you and the darker color and it yeah. gives a little bit of yeah yeah just okay. a little shading there because it's kind of behind him it's kind of under him so it'll be a little darker so next i'm going to add a little bit more of like a um, a darker brown kind of like a burnt sienna to my my um, yellow ochre to get a little bit darker color here. And I'm just gonna start there to kind of outline those areas and 
give them some shape and a little shading. Now, I, I know. Noticed, Tanya, uh, go ahead, Jess. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. I was just saying, Ton Tanya said he makes it look so easy. <laughs> well, remember, I've I have drawn hundreds of dragons, <laughs> the same dragon, hundreds and hundreds of times, and. Uh, I've also been doing it for <clears throat> how many years have I been doing it? 40 some years, something like that. <laughs> it's now, it's pretty noticed, amazing, you know, considering I'm only what 25 that I've been doing this for 40 some years. <laughs> I know it. You're you're only 20, but you're so young. <laughs> <laughs> On the yeah. arm, I noticed. So did you actually like leave like a white spot so that it's or like a, a lighter spot? So it's kind of like where light will hit? Yeah. Yes, okay. I did. Mm -hmm. So, and see the bottom, the bottom of the jaw here gets a little darker. You have to kind of think where, where the light might be coming from, becoming, I usually do general lighting from above. So the highlights are usually on the top edges of things. Now this rounded part under the stomach, you know, the light doesn't really hit it real directly like it would the top edges of it but uh but the main thing is just kind of make the dragon whatever color you want and you know if you don't want to worry about the lighting it really doesn't matter it's a dragon you know <laughs> and you and you're just and you're just figuring it out you know as you draw more and more you can kind of worry about little things like that it'll it'll kind of it'll kind of come to you trying to get a little more color on the brush, but not too much. Let's see where I go. How about the bottom edge of the foot here? So it's kind of like where they tell you slow and steady, light and easy, because you can always put more on. You just can't take it off. Yeah, yeah, it works better that way. Just just build it up a little at a time. And then over here, I like to see the, the little circles i like to go around the edges with a darker color and it kind of gives them a little shape instead of still leaving them kind of flat looking and i need more color up here there I'm back again and maybe his his fingers <clears throat> see that's the one thing i i like about adding the colored pencil on top of the watercolor is I can do the watercolor a little looser, a little general, you know, areas. And then with your sharp colored pencils, you can go in and really put sharp edges and define the edges. Oh. Something else that really makes a difference if you're going to use watercolor or painting is a good brush with a, you can see this brush has got a nice point to it. And your brush is in all kinds of sizes. Uh, but if you've got a brush that'll make a nice point like that, then you can really get in there and do some nice detail. Okay. That, that's amazing the difference a good brush will make in, in what you're trying to paint. I'm trying to get another little bit darker, darker brown here, but not crazy dark. Somebody asked, is this Dewey? Dagmar. Yep, four we got little, four, four, we got four bucks. She, doesn't, she doesn't have eyelashes yet. <laughs> that would be one of the very last things I'd put on. See, now I've got a little darker brown and I've got that sharp point and I can go around and just almost outline the edges of it. Oh. It starts to get a little more dimension to it there. I can go up here and outline a little bit there little bit of outline around the edge of that that ear up there so it looks like it has a little shape to it and a little bit there and and I just keep going back and forth and, and a little bit here and a little bit there and and just keep working all over the piece and uh, eventually it all gets done I like to pay attention to every little detail Sandy wants to know, do you ever use oil pastels? I never used them. I actually bought a set and I think I made a couple marks on a piece of paper with it and thought, hmm, um, I, I think what I wasn't comfortable with 
was the fact that I couldn't get these tiny little details like I'm doing here. <laughs> right. But of the colors of them, they're so rich and beautiful. And if you were working very large, like if you were working on a, you know, a large, well, what would I say? <laughs> uh, two by three foot piece of paper or, or board or something and doing oil pastels, uh, you know, and a very big dragon, it probably would work well as long as you didn't have tiny little details. Yeah, that's the one thing, like, because you only have that little edge. And as soon as you put it down, <laughs> yeah. It flattens out. <laughs> I'm like, they don't have, sh or, or maybe, or no, they do have, I did get some oil pastels that have a little bit more of a, a pointed tip, but it doesn't stay pointy long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same with regular pastels. Uh, I've got a friend that's an artist and she does pastels and it's amazing the detail she does. She gets uh, little blades of grass and little bunny faces and all kinds of stuff, but I don't know how she does it. It's, it's just amazing. <laughs> I keep telling well, her, have you tried colored pencils? You can put them in a pencil sharpener and get them really sharp. <laughs> and I think on old pastels, there's certain ones that you can add like a little bit of water and be able to smear it. Oh, okay. No, I haven't um, tried that. I think if it's the one I'm thinking about, because I think that's it, what Stephen does. I'm not for sure. So, anyway, there's so I could, chalk pastels that you can do. Yes, you can is. almost turn it like like watercolor. The oil pastels. Oh my gosh, you, you can't even. I, I I tried it out, got it all over my desk, and I was like, "Well, I'll just wipe it off. No big deal." No. Nope. Yeah. Mm. No. Nope. There. It's there. I was like, here we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a little bit of areas of a dark, much darker green here just to kind of uh, show you what it looks like. And then I'm going to move on to the colored pencil piece. So we've got some time to work on it. Okay. See, it's looking doing really this, good. Doing the same thing with the darker green around the edges as I did with the darker brown around the edges. So it starts giving it some shape. And uh, as you get up into areas there, you know, it needs to kind of blend so it feels like it's round around there. And I'm not going to get into painting individual scales, uh, but you could, that, that would take some time. Uh, I think a good way to start would be maybe spots on the dragon. Like if he was green, maybe uh red spots or orange spots or purple spots or something just just to kind of the way i showed you last week of drawing some spots onto the dragon right uh, my easier thing than trying to paint in every single scale uh the scales are much easier to do when you're doing colored pencil on top of here you can really define the scales so i'm having a very hard time dropping my paintbrush and not picking up Anyway, so that kind of gives you a feel for, for what I'm doing here, though, with the color, with the watercolor. Just just start light and slowly build and slowly build. And okay. if you need, like if you got an area that's, again, that's, uh, I'm just going to pick any old area that, that uh, and I've got just a little bit of water on my brush. You can just kind of go in and it's like there's a little edge from the color. You go in and just kind of lightly brush over it. And, and it kind of blends in. It gets rid of those kind of edges if you don't want that. You can see a little softer areas there. So anyway, okay. Um, Sandy says some of her oil pastels are very thin. She has a number of different types of pencils, regular oils uh, when she's painting and her charcoal. So, Oh. Well, like I said, it's, it's a matter of trying different, all these different medias and just seeing what works for you. And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, real big on, uh, I find one thing that works for me and I've done it my whole life. So, <laughs> and a lot of, uh, so many artists I know just love trying different paints, different brushes, different medias over and over and over. And uh, I get a little stuck in my own way and I like to do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this little dragon head here with colored pencils. And again, 
I'm going to start with a very light colored, like a light yellow green. And very lightly, uh, just start drawing him. Just start turning his head green. Sherry asks, what is your favorite coloring pencil? Uh, Prismacolors. That's what these are. These are Prismacolors. Eh, somewhere. Yeah, I think I've kind of worn it off and <laughs> sharpened it down. You can't read it. But these are Prismacolors, yes. I know yeah. there are other some good brands out there, other brands, and I... I've tried Derwent, and they're nice too, but I don't know, Prismacolors have just gotten used to their, kind of their softness and the way they just kind of go on the paper. And I know we're not sponsored, but Michaels did have them on sale. Oh, did they? That's yes. the best time to get them. Use your, yeah. your coupons. I go to Michaels and pick up a pencil because there's one right up the street. If I run out of colors here and there, I'll just run up to Michaels and I'm on their, I'm on their mailing list, uh, their email list. And it's like every day they're sending me a, a discount coupon for something. You can usually get at least 20% off and some days even more. So anyway. I managed to get a set of 12 Prisma colors because that was the only one at the time that was on sale. <laughs> uh huh. That's a good place to start. So now I'm going with a little bit. Uh, I'm going to leave my pencils out here. So you can kind of see some of the colors. Boy, it was a little oh, bit Tyra, dark. That is so sweet. Randall, her five-year-old daughter, has joined her drawing tonight along with you. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that reminds I me. I, I want to, before I forget, I want to say hi to Leslie. She's the lady that works for me and does all the magic and makes my business happen. And Emily, I got to say hi to Emily. Emily is her daughter, and she, Emily is absolutely wonderful. Oh, hey, Francesca, how are you doing? Uh, Tammy, the last day to submit the drawing, and I'm uh, so every Sunday is at 11:59 Central. I guess it all depends on what. I know 11.59 Central Time is when I close off the commenting. So you've got until 11.59 Central Standard Time on Sunday to There's get that in. Time zones. I know. <laughs> now see here, I'm doing the same thing as I did with the watercolors. I start with a very light green. And now I'm going in and I'm adding a little bit darker green. Uh, to the sides of his head, this starts giving him some shape because the light's coming from the top. And so uh -huh. the sides of his face are going to be a little darker green because there's a little more shadow there. And uh, a little bit of green because the, the, the nose is kind of like these round balls. So they've got a little bit darker green on the bottom edges of them. And the nice thing about colored pencils is you can just not press as hard and just, just kind of slowly build up the color. That way you can see exactly what you're doing. And are you doing enough, uh, enough color and you can just keep building and building. Oh, okay. Same now, to, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, do you have to add, um, do you have to d go with a darker color or can you take the same color and go over it again, like a little bit, like, yeah, you can you can you can see kind of what I'm doing here. I started very light and and I'm starting to uh actually just use the same color and make it darker. I will go on top of it uh with a darker color. Uh one thing you have to kind of watch for with colored pencils is once you put if you keep putting it on really heavy, it kind of builds up a waxy surface, which makes it very slick. And it kind of gets to a point where it won't, you really can't do more color on top of it. Uh, so it's kind of nice to just build it up slowly where you don't have this big, heavy, waxy surface on there. Um, so, okay, let's try a little bit darker color here. I don't wanna... Sandy, you group it's called draglings and books and that's where you will enter your drawings somebody put the link in the chat earlier yeah cynthia if you're, st if you're still here would you put the link to the draglings and book facebook page please um that would be wonderful 
Yeah. Oh, Christine says, this reminds her of watching Bob Ross, but this is finding your happy scales instead of trees. Randall's voice is so calming. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and, yeah, all I need is a good thing I'm not, I, have, I need a big, big fuzzy wig or something here. <laughs> my, my chiropractor, uh, who is uh, about 20 years younger than me or more, uh, for Halloween, he he wore a big frizzy wig. Of course, when I saw him, I thought he was Lenny Kravitz. He says, "No, I'm Bob Ross." Uh, I didn't I didn't grow up with Bob Ross. Is the thing I know who he is. I have seen him, but I didn't grow up with him, so it just didn't hit, ring a bell with me when I saw him. I definitely grew up watching him. He was, and that was my mom was like you're what what are you watching and i'm like bob ross he's like he's amazing and like i i, I messed up the house attempting to because she would never get me oil paints but you know i thought i could try to do the same thing mm -hmm. here at five years old and i <laughs> turned the living room into a my art studio and got it all over the carpet she she made she said you can watch the videos or you can watch the show but you cannot mm -hmm. participate so you can see I've kind of I took another darker uh, uh, darker green and put on top of that. I'm gonna go in with my uh, need my my pencil sharpener here. Anyway, a good pencil sharpener is real helpful. I mean, a really good one that'll give you a sharp point without keep breaking it off. Uh, ah, makes a good uh, big difference if you're using colored pencils. But I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with the watercolors. Uh, with these colored pencils. Just get a real base, nice base color here of the tan. I'm kind of very loosely drawing it all in. It's amazing how fast time goes by when you're just sitting here drawing. I know, and it's just, it's, it's so much fun just watching you. I mean, it's just so I just, relaxing. I thought I might have these all done in the first 10 minutes, and then what would I do? But I guess that's not okay. <laughs> so anyways, you can see on this one now, I'm going back in and I'm pressing a little harder to give it a little more shading on underneath. And then of course, under the dragon's chin here on his chest, uh, it's gonna be a little darker because there'll be a shadow coming down. Anyway, and now see what else I can find here. I'll see. I love how you can see the different shading, even just up underneath there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is goldenrod. That's another one of my favorite colors. Uh, I like to do the yellow ochre and then some goldenrod on here. But whatever color you decide to make the dragon, I mean, if he's pink and purple, you can do the very exact same shading with, with any color that you want. And okay. I'm trying to keep up with the request in the draglings and books. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep up with them, y'all. We'll get you in there. We'll get you in there. Okay. So what I'm going to jump to uh, is the eyes real quick since I've got my colored pencils here. Let's see if I can find the right color. Of a light blue. My colored pencils are in these tins. Uh, some artists have them all laid out by color. Uh, I pile them all in these tins, and I've got two of these. So every time I'm looking for a color, I just have to kind of sort through until I find what I want. <laughs> <laughs> it's always worked for me, you know. I try keeping them organized by color, but you know, you get, you, you kind of, uh, grab a pencil and that using that color and before you know it you've got about three or four in one hand and you're drawing with the other hand and and then you lay them up here and then they're all over the place and uh so anyway so i'm starting with uh kind of a light blue and i'll even put a little bit of light blue around where the what would be the white of the eye just just to kind of give it a little more shape because the eyeball is actually round 
So anyway, a little bit of light blue there. And then I've got a, a darker blue here. This is ultramarine blue. And kind of uh, take it around the edges. Now, what I would normally do on my pieces with the brown paper is I would draw the eye in. And then I would take my white paint and I would put a highlight in the eye, kind of on top of there. And I should have probably left a white area there for the highlight, and I didn't. But. Well, just out of curiosity, if you do end up doing that, can you take like a, uh, like a white uh, Prismacolor pencil or a white gel pen to still add a highlight there? Absolutely. You sure could. I think uh, I'd probably like a gel pen or a little bit of white, a spot of white acrylic or something would probably show up more than just the white colored pencil. Okay. Here's another little shade of, a little more of a turquoisey shade of this part of the eye. But if you look at a, a, an eye or a photograph of an eye, you'll see there, even the colored area is a little darker around the edges and gets a little lighter in the middle. You know, it just kind of gives a little shape and a little depth. And then the thing that really brings it uh, alive, the black. Got to have that little pupil. <laughs> yeah. See, it starts coming alive like that. Um, now, my as you work on it now, uh, like I say, it's the good thing is about starting light is that you you can see at this point where the light green of him it's just not green, not dark enough. So what I need to do is just find a little bit. Uh, where's my pencils at? Let's go back to the one I started with here. Go back in here and make it a little darker. Make the whole area a little darker. And that's that's kind of what I do on all of my pieces, even if I'm working on dark paper. I just I just keep building and building and building the colors up to where you want them. I, I got to say, I, I in kind of enjoy doing this, uh, what we're doing here uh, with uh, the, the videos and having uh, everyone watching, uh, because if I was doing this in front of everyone and they were staring at me, I would be so nervous and I would just be making a mess. But I feel, oh. like, I, I feel like I'm just sitting here talking to my phone, so I've this is kind of a kind of a fun thing to do. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you agreed to do this because I mean we're we're really learning. I'm telling you, you actually are doing a really good job showing us and teaching us. I mean, I've learned so much, um, and I'm sure a lot of people are learning so much, and it's just it's fascinating. Well, thank you, thank you. It's uh, it's, fun it's just to do. coming together. Yeah, so I've got in with a third area of uh, a little bit. This is a burnt, uh, a burnt ochre or burnt sienna is very similar also. Uh, just a darker, I like little reddish browns, but to kind of go around the edges of the piece. A little shading there and then very lightly, just, just, you can see I'm not putting much color on the paper, but it, yet it is getting darker. Mm-hmm. Kara said, uh, does anyone want to try to imagine how many shades of green pencils he has? <laughs> <laughs> I have every shade they make. <laughs> There's a couple of them I'm not too nuts about. There's like a marine green that uh, I rarely use. It's a very gray green. It's kind of dull. I do like olive greens. Uh, I like a, well, I've used a bit of a grass green. I like dark green. Um Apple green is, is one I like a lot too. I like that apple green. Yeah, that one's so pretty. <sighs> Berta. Well, first off, Diane, the dragon you drew last week was cute. And it's the first thing you've ever tried to draw. So, you know, you did really good for your first time. 
And Berta, you learned how to draw a dog head today with a semi-larger dragon body. See, look at there. Hey, look, See? making <laughs> different creatures. That's yes, awesome. Yeah, yes. And okay, so anyway, that's that's not as intense of colors as I like to end up with because I'm like I say I'm used to working in darker paper. Uh, and if I had more time, I would just keep going over and over and over this and darkening it up. And then. Uh, since there's not too much room here to do things, when I put the scales in on him, so I would probably just do this with the darker pencil and go along and do these scales, kind of in a, a rounded shape, just kind of feels like the body, you know, all these lines are going around to make him feel like he's got a round body. Okay. And they don't always have to meet perfectly. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll, uh, especially when I'm going around the leg, uh, you know, up here, where I drew it in in pencil. Uh, you can't always make those little things fit perfectly. So you just keep making little scallops, whether they meet the line before, you know, as long as they're about the same shape, they give you the feel of scales. Oh, okay. Sherry, that's not even right. She said 50 shades of green. <laughs> Sandy says she wishes she had you as her art instructor versus the one she had many years ago. Oh, <laughs> you know, I've never ever taught classes. She ever done anything like this? Uh oh. But my um. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let's put him. Is he? Is he still? Is he back? Yeah, he's back. Okay, I just got to change the layout back. Oh, this is so cheapish. Nope, not that. No, not that. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's fix this. There we go. Anyway, and also, I guess before we go, my dragons, you know, they've got little, they've got little warts on their cheeks. So the dragon with four little balls on the tail gets four little, little, I call them warts, but four little little round bumps on the cheek. And then the draggling with, and I didn't do the eyes. I have a W eyelashes yet, but the draggling with the, uh, I'll make this this uh, dewy. So he gets five little little things on the, on the cheek there. I think of them as little freckles, dragon freckles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, the little, little, little bumps there, yes. Half eaten uh chocolate chip oreos or chocolate chip cookies oh nancy says she feels like she's in a master class because she thinks her dragon looks like a dragon which is awesome <laughs> and something i did not get to uh was this other dragon but gosh we are running out of time and yes. i was wondering what i'm gonna do next week but uh i can see next week there are things to do uh, to continue with with this and uh, I had a suggestion to, like someone has already done, use the basic idea of the dragon and his body and draw other animals, uh, pretty much anything, a bunny, a cat, uh, a frog. Uh, I'm just trying to think of other things that I have drawn over the years. And uh, so I'll probably work on that next week and I'll work on coloring of this guy because here you can, this could take some time. You could get into fun purples and turquoise oh. greens and jade colors and and just make it a really really fun exotic looking dragon i so, would love that oh yeah. yes so that that's why I to do that one yes kara kara said um she had one of her former art teachers ask if you would mind if she shared these videos of you of you drawing with her students no i'd be fine I think they're out there. They're out there on YouTube. So, <laughs> Cynthia, thank you for sharing Randall's uh, website. Yes, y'all, please, please, please go visit Randall's um, website. Uh, you know, if you have not picked up his books, and trust me, you, even if you pick up one for yourself, I'm just telling you right now, you're going to probably want to pick up one for, you know, kids or grandkids so that somebody else doesn't take yours. Most have seen <laughs> it, but the Dragons, you know, bedtime storybook, it's got uh, uh, 
pictures every page of the draglings and with all the colors and on and on. And then there's also an ABC book called D is for Dragling. And then I showed you at the beginning the uh, and these two books are on my website, uh, randallspangler.com and uh, the coloring book on Amazon. And that it would be a great place uh, to color. And after working on this paper, I got a feeling colored pencil is probably the best thing to use in the coloring book. Because it will, these pages, oh yes, the coloring book paper takes colored pencil really nice. Oh. <laughs> See, that's why I got to get a second one because I I want to play around with it and not mess it up. So, yeah. you know, I want one that's pristine. And this particular <laughs> little dragon, this is one of my, what I call a teacup dragon. They're smaller and they sleep in teacups. Uh, they've got little wings, but instead of scales, I just did these little spots. Uh, which is a lot easier than doing scales. And then you can really throw in some fun colors like green with green with purple spots or something like that, you know. So anyway, those, that's kind of stuff you can have fun and just experiment in the coloring book. Anyway. Well, I'm so glad. Like I said, if y'all have not had a chance to go and get it, you need to go get it. And with the, with the actual, uh, the storybooks, um, Usually, if you order from his website, um, he generally tends to sign it. Um, oh, yes. Uh, I signed the, I do sign the two books because I ship them out myself. Uh, and the coloring books are, are directly from Amazon. So they print them and they ship them and everything. So I, they are not signed. Yes. But so if you want a signed one, you definitely need to go to his website and, and get one. But um Kids would be fascinated with them, but like I said, that's why I have to, I have to get extras because when I have grandkids, they're not, they're not going to get mine. So, okay. um, uh, well, thank you so much, Randall. Let me put us back in the layout here with all three of us. Um, is that the right way? I have no idea. Let me see. Is that got all three of us there? Okay. <laughs> So thank you so much once again for week number two. I really, really, really hope that you guys have had fun. I know I've, I'm always entranced and um, you really have done a really good job showing us and teaching us. And um, I'm loving seeing everybody's artwork. Um, I think you guys are all doing amazing. And so Oh, Denise says, I'm waiting for and praying for a picture of all the draglings with a list of their names in the description. <laughs> well, we do know some of their names. We know some. Mm -hmm. um, but I will tell you that this has been so much fun. And this is I'm just so grateful um, that you, uh, you know, have agreed to do this with us. So I really appreciate it. So thank you so much, Jess. Thank you for joining us. And guys, if you have not joined the Draglins and Books Facebook page to be able to uh, participate in the event, please go every um, Monday of this month. So we've got two more. Mm -hmm. um, and and so Art Club too for for the gift certificates. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there'll be another everyone, one. For most everyone knows uh, about an Art Club, but they they just do amazing job with. Uh, converting my artwork into diamond paintings. And they're so much fun to paint because they're the colors are so vibrant. Oh my they gosh. Are amazing. They are just amazing. There's just a make sure I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Randall. Sorry. No, I no, I, I'm just changing my camera so you can see uh the diamond painting right behind me here. <laughs> just make sure you answer all the questions to get into the group. That makes it our life a whole lot easier. We don't have to trace down everybody. Right. And, you know, you just, uh, you have to make sure that when you are also, once you're in the group, just make sure that you are commenting on the correct post, um, which it, you know, I put it up there um, on last night where it says, you know, week two post. This is week two post. Uh, this is where you put it. So, um, and like I said, you know, if you've got a, uh, your, your drawing, 
uh, that you've got. Um, you know, now you add some color to it and everything. Uh, post that on there as well as if you're working on a diamond painting. And those of you that are working on cross stitch, as long as it's the heaven and earth designs, that is Randall's, um, then that is perfectly fine. And so um, just join along with us. Have fun. That's yeah. the whole purpose of this is just to have fun and enjoy and celebrate Randall and his awesome artwork. All right. So thank you guys for joining and I appreciate it. And I'm going to leave you like I always do. Reach for the stars. Grab hold. Hold on and never let go. Until the next time. Bye, guys.